Hi everyone. In this session, we will talk about a very famous architecture, UNET. I will introduce what is UNET, what the problem it solves, what is the architecture, and how we use it. UNET is an architecture that is designed for image segmentation task. You may have heard about other famous architectures such as AlexNet, VGG, ResNet. These architectures are for image classification task. In image classification, the input is an image and the output is a class label for the whole image. Different from image classification, UNET is for image semantic segmentation. So what is semantic segmentation? I will briefly introduce it. Given an image, if you assign each pixel to a class label, you will have a pixel level segmentation result. It means that in this segmentation, each pixel belongs to a specific class, and this is semantic segmentation. Here is an example. The top figure is, uh, is an image of the street, and the bottom figure is a corresponding segmentation. In this segmentation, the different colors are different classes, and each pixel in the segmentation belongs to a specific class, such as a car, the street, the tree, or other classes. So if we use UNET for this image segmentation task, the input of UNET will be the RGB image, and the output of UNET will be the uh, semantic segmentation, or we say the pixel level segmentation. The original paper for UNET is from uh, Olaf Ranneberger, which is published in 2015. In this paper, UNET is originally proposed for medical image segmentation. This is an example of cell segmentation, uh, which is shown in this paper. The left figure is the cell image, and the right figure is the segmentation. In the segmentation, the yellow contour is a manually labeled result. The cyan mask is the output of UNET. And we can see that these two results overlap quite well, which means uh, the UNET can achieve good performance for this cell segmentation task. So now let's look, uh, let's see what UNET looks like. This is a famous figure for the UNET architecture. As the architecture has a U shape, this network is called UNET. Here, we input a cell image and the output of the UNET architecture will be the cell segmentation. The whole architecture is an encoder-decoder architecture. The first half of UNET is called contracting path, uh, or we call it encoder. It is composed of convolutional layers and max pooling layers to extract uh, the features from the input image. The second half of UNET is called expansion path, or we call it decoder. This part consists of uh, upsampling layers and convolutional layers, which generate a segmentation from, this, from the extracted features. The special part of UNET is a skip connection. The skip connection concatenates the features from early layers and late layers. This skip connection um, helps give the localization information, which makes UNET very powerful for image segmentation task. So next, let's look at the architecture into more details with an example. We start from the top left. Say uh, we have a grayscale input image with a size of 128 by 128 by one. It inputs into a convolutional layer which generates 16 features. And from these 16 features, another convolutional layer generates another 16 features. 
uh, and the output of these layers has a size of 128 by 128 by 16. Next, we downsample the features with a two by two max pooling layer. After max pooling, the feature map has a size of 64 by 64 by 16. And then we put this feature map into two convolutional layers, which generate 32 features. The output of these layers has a size of 64 by 64 by 32. Then we repeat the uh, max pooling and downsample the features to 32 by 32 by 32. And we pass the features into uh, the convolutional layers, which generate 64 features. And we obtain the feature map with the size of 32 by 32 by 64. And then we repeat max pooling and the convolution and uh, get the feature map with the size of 8 by 8 by uh, 256. OK, so this is the encoder part of UNET. And the next is the decoder part of UNET, which we want to generate a 2D segmentation from this 8 by 8 by 256 features. And how we do this? First, this feature is upsampled uh, where an uh, upsampling layer. This upsampling operation can be implemented by a transposed convolutional layer. And uh, the upsampling result has a size of 16 by 16 by 128. So let, let me make myself clear here. With the upsampling layer, the size of the feature is expanded from 8 by 8 to 16 by 16. The number of features is reduced from 256 to 128. OK? Then we concatenate the upsampled feature with the, uh, the, with the features from the early layers. The features from early layers also has the also have a size of uh, 16 by 16 by 128, which has the same size of the upsampled features. Here I want to mention that the upsampled features and the features from the previous layers should have the same resolution. It means that in this case, these upsampled features can only be concatenated with features from this block, not other blocks, OK? So the rectangular shape here um, means represents the upsampled feature and the features from the previous layers, OK? So then we pass the uh, concatenated features into convolutional layers, which generate 128 features. And then we obtain a feature with size of 16 by 16 by 128. Then we upsample again and obtain the feature map with the size of 32 by 32 by 64. We concatenate it with the, pre the features from previous layer and put, it, put the concatenated features into the convolutional layers and obtain the results with a size of 32 by 32 by 64. Then we upsample again and uh, upturn the features with the size of 64 by 64 by 32. And we concatenate it with the previous, uh, concatenate it with the features from previous layers and pass them into the convolutional layers and we upturn the feature map with size of 64 by 64 by 32. Then we repeat this operation again, and uh, we upturn the feature maps with the size of 128 by 128 by 60. OK, so next, we use a convolutional layer to generate the final segmentation. The size of the final segmentation is 128 by 128 by two. The two here means two classes, the foreground and background. In this specific case, it means cells or not cells. 
So this is the whole architecture of UNET. Most of the convolutional layers in this architecture has the kernel size of three by three. The convolutional layer before the output layer uh, output has the kernel size of one by one. The max pooling and uh, upsampling layer has a kernel size of two by two. And uh, normalization, uh, batch normalization and ReLU layers usually follows the convolutional layers. So overall, this is uh, and is this is a simple example of using UNET for the image segmentation task. And next, we will have a look how to use UNET for your own image segmentation task. As UNET has been proposed and used for so many years, there are many repos you can find on GitHub for the implementation. They have the PyTorch version and TensorFlow version. Here, I just want to uh, briefly introduce what parameters of the UNET architecture we can change for a specific image segmentation task. First of all, the input image is not always a grayscale image. It can be a RGB image. If the input is RGB image, the size of input will be 128 by 128 by three. The three means the three channels of the RGB image. And uh, the number of features can also be changed. You can choose more features or less features. The depth of the network can also be changed. You can downsample and upsample more times or less times. All of this depends on the complexity of your uh, image segmentation task. And um, the parameters of the architecture can be different for different data sets as well. Here, I just want to mention that uh, the image size is not limited to 128 by 128. It can be any size. Just don't forget using padding uh, to make sure that input and output images have the same size, okay? Now, since uh, UNET has been proposed and achieved good performance for image segmentation task, many variants of UNET have been proposed in recent years. The original UNET deals with 2D images for 2D segmentation. In 2016, a 3D UNET has been proposed for, um, for the 3D segmentation. In the 3D UNET, the 2D operations in the original UNET has been replaced by the 3D counterparts. And the uh, H-dense uh, UNET has been proposed for the liver and the tumor segmentation task. Uh, this network connects connected the, uh, the 2D dense unit and the 3D counterparts for a specific segmentation task and achieves better results. The UNET++ is a more powerful uh, medical image segmentation framework. It is built on the UNET architecture and use the densely connected nested uh, decoder subnetworks to extract more powerful features. The NNUNET is a deep learning based method for medical image segmentation. This framework uh, can automatically configure itself, including pre processing, building network architecture, training, and post processing for any new task. The graph unit is a method that uses unit architecture for analyzing the graph data. And there are more and more variants of units have been proposed after 2019. So currently, I would say that UNET is still the uh, latest and uh, powerful architecture for image segmentation. It has been used on so many tasks, especially on medical image segmentation tasks. For example, the brain tumor segmentation, the liver segmentation, the retinal vessel segmentation, and the lung segmentation. If you are interested in any uh, applications, of using UNET for medical image analysis, 
you can search for papers and read the papers and get more detailed information.